This isn't about, is it worth the price that it's worth? This isn't about, what about bullion instead? This isn't about NGC and Annex and how are they graded? This is about your story, right? This is about creating your story at events like this and then this, decide right now that you're going to make your story happen. But it's about sharing your story and sharing it over and over and over again with everyone that you speak with. And sharing it so often and so well that it just flows naturally. Right? Your story is not unique, it's just unique to you. And there's no one better at sharing your story than you are. Right? I couldn't share, I couldn't tell any of these stories better than the actual person whose story it was. Well, thank you. Well, except for Larry Thompson, now I can do it better than that. <laughs> but it's important because people resonate with the story. And they're going to want to, they have their own story as well that's unique to them. And instead of talking about the coins and the prices and the this and the that, you talk about your story, about where you were, why you joined, and where you are now as a result, and what newness has done for you. So my story really is, I was in corporate America for 16 years. And in the last eight years, the company I was with, the division that I was in was constantly, they were threatening to dissolve our division. I was in deregulated energy. And it was a risky division. I worked for a utility company, very conservative utility, with a deregulated arm. I was in that deregulated arm. And we'd hear from the corporate office of Virginia, month after month, quarter after quarter, that they were talking about getting rid of our division, just dissolving it completely because it's too much risk. So I'd go to work every day with this threat looming, myself and all the other guys in our group, that corporate, for the bottom line, for quarterly earnings, for stockholders, and whatever, could just get rid of us. And it would be my boss's boss's boss would be the guy making that decision with a stroke of a pen. We're all out of have a job. And while I had a good job, uh, and it paid fairly well, we could support ourselves, uh, I knew that at any moment, it could be taken away from me. And then I'd have to go find another job. And I'd have to start all over again start to rebuild, and that this would be a cycle that I just assumed I'd be doing this for the next 20 or 30 years, you know, hoping I could maybe do well enough to retire at 55, probably more realistic, 60 or 65, and just knowing I'd have to go through the grind every single day. And I, I thought this was going to be my future, mainly because I didn't know about network marketing. You see, I was ignorant to network marketing. I didn't know it existed. Uh, I didn't know there was opportunities like newness. And uh, just by blessing, Michelle got involved in this and started doing very, very well. And I started watching her and seeing her. And when Michelle first got into this, I was very skeptical. I really was. I thought, what is she doing? Is this thing legit? Is this real? Do people still even do this kind of stuff anymore? I mean, isn't Amway dead? Is that going to die in the 80s? You know? Because that's all I knew. I admit, I was ignorant. I just had no idea. And as a result of, of seeing Michelle start to have some success, and for me, success meant money, right? Because no matter what she was doing, how long she was working, how many hours, whether it was a, a webinar or a meeting or a capture page or a sample, all, well, all translated to me is, are you making any money or not, right? And when she got, after you know, the, the, the net, after the, the net payment, after her auto ship, that first check was $17.83, <laughs> I was like, Go, Michelle. <laughs> this will buy me like an 18 pack of my Awesome. Our, our future's secure. <laughs> but it, it grew from there, right? The $17 check became a $200 check. And the $200 check became a $800 check. And when she got that first $1,000 check, I was like, holy cow, this is kind of legit. Maybe I should start paying attention a little bit more. So I did. I started paying attention. Um, during the webinars, the normal evening webinars that we all know and love and have been on a million of them, uh, instead of just watching the Red Sox game and having her with the headphones, you know, I started turning down the volume of the Red Sox game and said, hey, you know, honey, you can take your headphones out, I'll listen to the webinar. They're not any good anyway. <laughs> the webinars, you're right. <laughs> Show your shirt. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm kind of mic'd up and plugged in, but... <laughs> What's this say? A Rod wears lipstick. Oh. <laughs> a Rod wears lipstick. Dude, I'm not a Red Sox fan, but I like this shirt. 
uh, I support you. <laughs> so little by little, I started. Uh, cool. Again, I turned the volume down on the Red Sox game, and I said, "Michelle, turn the volume up on the webinar." And I slowly, slowly, started getting involved. And, and I guess my first involvement was really just supporting her, uh, because we both discuss this all the time. There could have been a time where I just said, "Michelle, no, squashed it all. You have to go back to work." And had I done that, had I been that hard-nosed spouse? That real no you have to get a job, this is not working out, I mean, this is never going to happen, and I squash your dreams, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, I wouldn't have retired from corporate America. I wouldn't have been able to walk into my boss's office and say, thanks for everything, you've been great, but I'm out of here. And I literally said to him, I'll give you two weeks if you want, but I'm prepared to walk out today right now. It's up to you. So had it not been for me slowly but surely getting involved, and, and keeping an open mind, and, and supporting Michelle, and turning the volume down on the Red Sox game, and turning the volume up on the webinars, and attending live events like this. Had it not been for all that, none of this would have happened. And so thank you, Michelle, first of all, for being awesome, and uh, for doing what you did, and what you still continue to do. But, um, so it was really, you know, for me, because I, I honestly never believed, if, if you'd asked me, you know, two, three years ago, where would you be in two or three years? I would have said, well, I'd be you know, going to work every day, uh, sitting in my cube, having TPS reports due by Tuesday, you know, doing all that thing, you know, showing up for the quarterly meeting, whatever. And I would have been doing that for the next you know, 20, 30 years, hoping and, and praying that I could maybe retire earlier than most. But you know, that probably would have been up to my boss and boss and boss to determine if that would have happened or not. Right? So, I think the power of this industry and the power of what we're involved in right now, it is a game changer. This is the kind of thing that will absolutely change people's lives. And I know for a fact, I know this for a fact because it's changed my life and it's changed our lives. And we have gone on four fully paid vacations since we've been in this. We do have more than $15,000 worth of assets in our house, things just like this, because of newness. Now we also have a great income coming in, an uh, income stream that is, some of it's up front, some of it's midterm, and we're growing in a, hopefully a huge, enormous, long-term residual. So that in three or four or five years, after crushing newness, doing what we do every single day, doing it for the next three or four or five years, we'll be making 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 a month in passive residual income. And that's what this is about. I mean, $40 is great. You know, the fast track bonuses are awesome. But this is about setting yourself up now, working hard now, for two or three or four or five years to set yourself up for life. 50 to 100 grand a month in residual income is extremely realistic with this new compensation plan that we have. <coughs> Many people in at 119 bucks now is extremely realistic. Building a massive organization is extremely realistic for everyone. Not just for us winning the contest, for every single person in this room, for every single person on your team. Woo! Thank you. Cheers for that. And I want to ask you to ask yourselves, is it worth it right now to sacrifice two or three or four years? And when I mean sacrifice, it's not a sacrifice. It's just working really hard. It's just talking to a lot of people. We're not digging dishes. It's going on free vacations. It's going on free <laughs> vacations. Yeah. But I mean, we're not Larry. We're not construction workers breaking our backs like he was originally. You know, that's not the kind of work we're talking about. We're talking about talking to people, sharing your story for two to three to four years, so that you can then sit back for the rest of your life, making 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand a month that passes us away. And what are you willing to sacrifice right now? Are you willing to sacrifice a little bit of family time if you have to be on another webinar for training so you can then set yourself up for life? I think an hour a night sacrifice of family time might be worth that for a few years, right? Are you willing to sacrifice maybe, maybe a little bit of, um, I don't know, humility? You know, you weren't, you weren't normally, you weren't going to talk to your friends about this. You weren't going to approach your boss about this. You know, you weren't going to hit up your, your uncle and your aunt and your cousins about this because maybe you thought you might look bad. Well, how about now? You can just give them free silver. You're not going to look bad. You're going to look awesome. Is it worth doing that now for two or three or four years to set yourself up for life? 
Yeah. For us, I know it is. I know that Michelle and I have nothing else planned but for the next three or four years to crush Numis until we're at a point where we're making $100,000 a month in passive residual income. That's our personal goal. And yeah, a million dollars would be really cool too. <laughs> 250000 also pretty cool as well. Yeah. So we'll do that. So we look at this big picture. We look at this long term. This isn't just about now. It's not just about the next. It's not just about what I'm willing to do for the next two weeks, but then I'll kind of fizzle out because I've lost interest. This is about us crushing it for the next three or four years so that we're making $100,000 every single month in past residual income. Then we get to look back and say, wasn't that worth it? Wasn't that absolutely worth the webinars and handing out solar samples and doing all the stuff that we're talking about here this week and being coached on how to do? Will that not make it all worth it? For all of you, we'll make it worth it. When you have 5,000 people in your organization, this can be worth the sacrifice that you make now for the next 18 months. Of course. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So, that's really all I got. No, it, but I can just say, <laughs> how much time do we have, Chris? Five minutes? Hey, hey Bill. Yeah. I have a prospecting question. Uh, sure. what, you know, you hear a lot of uh, prospecting training about like you know using using the form questions and making it about them and finding out what their goals and their dreams are. So where do you integrate your story? You know, is that a follow-up call? Is that He's so good at this. Yeah. I, I have to say this real quick though before he answers that. I will sit there in the office and text Ray or Jess like famous quotes from Gil because he is so good. Like, if, yeah, you know, I won't go into it. But it's so funny just sitting there. He's so good on the phone. So I definitely want you to share that because you are always telling stories to people when you talk to them and you find their pain. I do. Um, and, and there's not necessarily, Adam, like, oh, I inserted here. Right? Every conversation is a little bit different. And I think you know, part of when we're talking to people about this is it has to be a conversation. It's not so much a script, it's a conversation. It's not so much you're thinking, okay, at which point do I insert this statement and then how do I say it and what do I follow up with? Because that's gonna come across as pitchy and, and probably robotic, right? So what I really just try to focus on is having a conversation with the person. And the conversation I had at 11 in the morning might be very different from the conversation I had at 1 in the afternoon just because it flowed differently. Um, I will always, though, try to insert certain things at some point. I'll try to touch on certain points, but it's got to be a bit of a give and take. So I may now, knowing that I've had so many of these conversations, I know what I'd like to come across. I know what I'd like to say at certain points. What did I say at the beginning or at the end or the first call or the second? You know, it's a little different every single time. Um, but I, I will want people to at least have walked away from that conversation, at least knowing a couple of things about the story, about us, or, or whatever. Well, and Adam, if you're doing something like that, that I want you to touch on, that I hear him say all the time, is you're kind of doing the same thing that we do. We're looking for business opportunity seekers out there a lot of times. And they're struggling. And Bill's very good at finding what they're struggling with. And he asked, you know, what those things are. And from there, I always hear him tell the story, you know, it's very similar to how my wife started out. You know, she was working very hard, but not very smart, I like to say. And he kind of goes into a little bit of details about how I was struggling and how I found the answer to solve that struggle. And part of that, obviously, is with inserting newness in this, working with the team, working with the community, working with people who will support you, working with the proven system, having these samples to hand out. You know, that's where you'll insert that in, and you tell that a lot. That's what I wanted you to kind of answer. Yeah, for them. Thank you. Just did very well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we work very well together, by the way. You would think that we don't because we go back and forth at each other, but I'm, I do all the finding people, and he is the phone guy. So anytime you guys have questions about phone, you talk to him. <laughs> Marketing, I can definitely help you with that and finding people. But it's funny because when we first started out, I had to let go of part of the business. You know, I was running it all, and I'm very A-type personality, and I was very much in control, and I had to step back and just let him, you know, find his own spot, find what he was good at, and I would listen to him talking to leads, and I never talked to a lead longer than five minutes, and he was talking to him for an hour, and I'd be like, God, you know, you, you talk to him forever, you know, I could whip through 100 leads like that. Are you in? Yeah. Okay, fine. You know, he's like, he's like having these long conversations, which has made him like a phenomenal closer. He's far better than I could ever do. Well, and let me insert that when I first started this. So a lot of this is finding your voice, right? But the point of this is not for you to become the next Bill or Michelle. 
point of this is to become the best you that you can be, right? And you have to find your own voice and your own style. What Michelle's talking about is when I first started talking to leads and talking to people, the reason why it took me, I had these hour-long conversations is because they wouldn't hang up on me. You know, I came from corporate America, scared where a sales call, you have like 10 to seconds to, to, you know, either they, they shut the door or they, you know, hang up on you. You have 10 seconds to get your point across. And as I'm from Boston, you know, people are very aggressive and mean, and, you know, they don't, they don't, they're not like, hey, how you doing, la la la. They're like, get to the point now before they hang up. And so I was conditioned through all my corporate America to get right to the point before you get hung up on and when I would now talk to people about newness or, or you know, prospects and leads, they weren't hanging up on me. So I'm like, this is great. I'll just keep talking to them. You know? and I, I equated a long conversation to a good conversation. Like the longer it went, I'm like, wow, this is going to be great. They're going to stand up, of course. What I realized over time is that the length of the call did not equate to the success of the call. And it took me a little while to find my voice and find my style. Now I'm not having you know, hour long conversations with people because it is more to the point, and I'm able to get to the point and hone in a lot more quicker through some very specific and pointed questions, right? I want to uncover their pain. I want, I know that Numis is a solution that I have to offer them, but I need to find their pain first to see if Numis is even right. Because we're not selling it. We're not selling it. Do you have to sell it? He's a good salesman. If he sold you to get to Numis and you quit, you're going to blame us. You know, but we have a good salesman. I mean, that's just well, kind of what happens. And here's an interesting thing real quick. Last night we were at the bar afterwards talking and Heath mentioned something. He's been talking to Chris and talking about how we first, you know, started talking and got to meet each other and, and sort of the evolution of him joining Numis and Heath made a comment. He said, I never felt like Bill sold me on anything. But yet you're in Numis with us. And so and, and Yeah. You saw the value, I guess. So you, you, you walked away not feeling like, oh, Bill just pitched me, or Bill just hammer closed me, or Bill just tried to sell me something, you walked away with a good feeling, I'm guessing, and, and, and you're on the team now. So it's not about selling and pitching and hammering and closing, right? It's about talking to people and understanding their situation. And then Numis is a solution. If they have a problem that fits the need, you provide them with a the solution. Because not everyone's going to have a problem that Numis is a solution to. And that's okay. You know, we don't need to get everyone on earth in Numis. Right? We just need like millions. Just 5,000. Right? Just 5,000. Yeah, just 5,000. Right? I don't need everyone on Earth. Right? I'm not going to target like gazillions in you know, China. That's not my goal. You know, so it's all about you know, talking to people that you come across, um, identifying their pain, providing a solution. And this is the solution. Uh, Nancy, yeah. because of your unique background and energy, will you share your posture with the energy companies? No. You're so good at that? Absolutely. I think it's pretty bad. Wait, wait, you mean like when people are already in an energy company? Energy companies. Oh, we have a couple that we brought into the MSO. I was just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure with that. How you, how you overcome that? Dude. Well, for me, that's. Did you sure go on and get into this? Do you have time? I want to understand the question. Yeah, I have the question. So I think what Nancy is saying, if, if I understand you correctly, um, there's a lot of there's energy network marketing companies out there, like right. Ambit and. Or any, uh, any other products. Product. Or, or there's over 4,000 health and wellnesses. <laughs> um, so in regards to energy, it's, it's quite simple. I say you know, you're dealing with a, 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 it's a, a service, it's a utility. They can just get it from their, their regular electric company and their utility while they want to get it from you. Right? And people look at energy as they, they covet it, they need it. It's, it's security, it's safety. And the, the risk of losing that by just going for you for like 10% off just to get 10% off your bill or save a few you know, dollars is not worth the fear or the loss of losing your power, losing your air conditioning, not having the American Idol, you know, having the milk and eggs rot in the fridge. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna join you in your in your energy just for a few bucks off if in the back of their mind they might lose all this other stuff because electricity is comfort. So that was an easy one. Uh, with the health and wellness is I'll just say, well there's over four thousand health and wellnesses out there. No offense, Larry Thompson. This is just how I am to do this positioning this. But I say they all have a scientist in Sweden who says they're the best product, right? They're all the best. Right? How can over 4,000 companies claim that they're the best? Right? But they do. So you know, the difference is for us is that with Numis, you're getting an asset, not a consumable, that you're just going to evacuate shortly thereafter anyway. Right? <laughs> That's what he says, too. And, you know, and with Numis, you're getting an asset. You know, it's okay if it collects dust. It still retains its value. But there's no expiration dates. Right? You don't, like as Ray says, you don't have to go to the doctor first. You don't have to see if it agrees with your tummy. 
know, it always works 100% of the time. It's an actual tangible asset that you can touch and feel and hold, unlike just about everything else in the network marketing industry. He works on the mind, definitely. It's a mindset shift is the way he works on a lot. You know, when people are in energy, everybody needs cell phone service. Everybody needs electricity. And that's what most people a lot of times think when they get into network marketing, like I did. Everybody needs to lose weight. 90% of people are overweight in America. So, I mean, it's okay to feel that way. But he shifts their mind to understanding <coughs> that it's, it's not about that everybody needs electricity or everybody needs to lose weight. He shifts it a little bit into, you know, a different mindset of understanding what it truly means to be in a network marketing company and to build a massive organization and to build a long-term residual income. Mm -hmm. so. I'll often say, you know, we're about building a business. If you want to just be a product user, that's fine. You know, if you can stay a product user, you can still take your, your pills and your, your juices. We're but we're, we're building a business. And if you, want, if you got into this to build a business, then you want to join us. We'll teach you how to build a business through our system. If you just want to be a product user, just keep using the products, that's fine. But did you really get into this to be a product user? Or did you get into this to be a business builder? That works too. There's a reason you're number one recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's so, all we have. Thank Just curious here. Patriots or Texans? Patriots. Patriots. Seahawks. Thank you. Texans. Listen, you know, <clears throat> you know, one of uh, one of my favorite people that I've ever seen. In